learning to walk again, even on water, reflections on grief and gift. The death of John the Baptist must have affected Jesus profoundly. At the beginning of this chapter, we discover that after John's heinous execution, some of his disciples went to relay the devastating news to Jesus. They must have been sensitive to the bond that existed between these two spiritual giants and how they mutually influenced each other. On receiving the news, the Gospel tells us that Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place to be by himself. This was perhaps part of the way Jesus dealt with the shock and waves of grief, part of the blessing, healing and restoration was the absolute need for Jesus to be alone. The Holy One who nourished and healed others needed nourishment, replenishment and healing too. And he found this in solitude, aloneness and silence. We all grieve and express our grief differently. Some in their grief work will need to paint, cook, dance, blog, jog, gym or scream will need to Facebook or lose themselves in work in order to navigate this new and uncharted landscape. Some in their work of grief will seriously need to be in the company of others, while some will need to be left the hell alone. Some will need the healing of animals, dogs, dolphins, horses. Some will need to walk through the color green frequently. Perhaps men do deal differently with grief and women. In any case, Jesus' heart was wounded by the news of John's death, a relation, mentor and friend. This, you could say, is the wider emotional context in which we find Jesus in the Gospel for today. We turn now to that. Even though his heart might have been devastated and broken, the Gospel says epically that when Jesus came out of the shelter of his cave, he had compassion for people. He was moved in his gut. He knew not just theoretically, but knew from the inside out what it is like to be bred and what it is like to be broken. And so he could relate to the people whom he saw and who sought him. He could be medicine and miracle, the wounded healer. Good grieving strangely does that to you, it enables you, it helps you to truly feel. Jesus felt for and with, compassionately. But then for the second time, Jesus needed to retreat. The work of grief takes time, a process that is sacred and often slow, one step forward and a few steps back. Jesus needed to be by himself again, even away from his inner circle. So he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side. After he had done this, we are told, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. And here he follows the pattern of his spiritual ancestors, Moses in particular. Jesus brilliantly and intuitively knows that some roads have to be travelled alone. He must have made a fire to help him survive the night. And perhaps when he struck that flint for the first few times, I hope his battered heart ran to his dad Joseph, who first taught the boy Jesus how to conquer darkness by making a fire. And Joseph, who first taught the boy Jesus to lift his head up and to read the stars. Joseph, who first taught the boy Jesus how to walk with courage and dignity across what seemed impossible. On that mountain, in that uphill, overcome with grief, perhaps Jesus mourned and cried for many things as he remembered John, his family, and all that he had gained and lost. Perhaps on that night, he who fed others was too sick with grief to feed himself. The Gospel story is written as if it was just a day and a night in which Jesus was given the grace to get over, as it were, the death of John. 
But if we read the story non-literally, in a wider emotional context, as a metaphor of how to work with grief, we begin to see that at its heart, part of the gift of grief is to teach us to walk again, even to walk on what seems impossible. And so the image the Gospel uses is Jesus walking on water. And this learning to walk again, even on water, often takes courage, guts, trust. It takes time with others and, perhaps equally important, time alone. It takes an outstretched hand. It takes months and years. But when morning comes, regardless of how long it takes to arrive, the Gospels tell us that Jesus was able to walk towards his disciples differently even on a surface that seemed impossible. This time, there was something unusual about him. Jesus carried himself differently with an energy, signature, aura and authority. They thought he was a ghost. To his frightened friends, Jesus said words often also attributed to angels. Do not be afraid. Take heart. It is I. Peter said, Lord, if it is really you, let me find the guts to do what you have done. So Jesus said magnificently, come. In other words, I don't have the copyright to these transformative things. We can share in them, come. Trust is the key. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshipped him. In the Greek sense of the word worship, it means that they got so close to Jesus that they could almost kiss him. What a marvellous image of intimacy. And perhaps one of his women disciples whispered to Jesus, You are not only Joseph's boy. Trudy, you are God's child too. And for the first time in his life, Jesus began to embody this truth more fully.